Good morning, everyone. How are we all today? How am I looking? Pretty tired. Just woke up. I actually slept really well. We are in this lovely anchorage, very well protected anchorage. Mind you, there's not a breath of wind or so it seems. And we're in Koh Samet at the moment and today we're heading to Ko Chang. Very excited, 60 mile passage. Hope you enjoy it with us. It is uh, 6.30 in the morning. I have been awake for precisely two minutes. Power bags open, get the engine started and run up. There we go, this one. Make sure we've got water coming out. Doing there. Late night rescue mission for the boat hook. Another one. Uh, another one, yeah. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you, and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Just uh, sailing down the coast of Coast Met, taking uh, my coffee dodging fishing pot things and fishermen and we've got probably another I don't know mile two miles until the tip and then we'll make a turn and we'll um, be able to kind of just be on our heading for today's sail because we've just got it basically going in one straight line. I think today's going to be a lot of sail trend. Yeah so we've just checked the forecast we should actually have wind today fingers crossed 10 to 15 knots probably just four to the beam Fingers crossed for a good sail. Yep. 10 to 15 on the beam gives us about 18 to 20. 18 to 20 apparent. Depending on how far it is, we'll create wind. If the wind's forward, the beam will yeah. create wind to the front of wind. Yeah. So we'll see how we go. Alright, let's go. We have the Code Zero up. We've got just creeping up over 15 knots of apparent wind and we're doing eight knots and she is looking beautiful. I think that uh, 15 knots is about kind of the limit of our comfort zone with the Code Zero at the moment. So if we kind of hit above that regularly, then we might have to think about just stopping out of the gym. It's an absolutely beautiful day. Very, very happy indeed. Oh, I always forget how nice it is up here. In the cockpit, it is like, it's pretty noisy actually, but up here it is lovely and quiet. Excellent sailing conditions for once. We're kind of hitting over 15 knots fairly consistently and also the wind is coming around. So we're at about 54 degrees now apparent. So the code zero is not really optimal. So we're gonna fill away and um, get the jib out. Not there, is it? I put this in here, maybe? Yep. Good as the wind catches it, I'm fine. Yeah. You can bring it in at quite a bit more, love. Still laughing, look. Still laughing. Alright. So I'd say we've lost about a knot, maybe just a bit less than a knot, maybe 0.8 of a knot or so. We're doing about seven and a half knots now, and before we were doing about 8.2-ish. So yeah, it's a little bit of quiet research. Oh God. This is where we're going. Where we went to. That's where we've been. We're going to. That's where we're going, yes. That's 60 miles between those two. Yeah. yeah. fishing pots out here. Honestly, it's a very, very pleasant place to stand for watch keeping. It kind of feels like cheating. I kind of say this a lot about this boat. I'm stood here, we are doing eight and a half knots. We've got a fan on, we have 20 knots of apparent wind. Bit of a beam sea, so we're like a little bit rolly. Therese, sight in the water, love. The coconut? Coconut. Coconut. 
We have about 25 miles to go. Nick is making lunch. The wind's dropped off to about 12, 13 knots. And so we've shaken the reef out. We probably could um, fill the jib away and put the screecher out, but we'll have a little chat about that in a minute. After lunch, I think, have something to eat first. See how the wind settles down. A very pleasant day. Most absurdly pleasant. So so nice. We've got Kochang just uh, in the background there. We can just see the outline of the island. It's beautiful, very mountainous. And we've got about 10 knots of wind and we're doing about I think six and a half knots. We've put the code zero back up and it's just extremely nice. We've got about 20 miles to go and we're hoping that the weather stays exactly like this for the next, I don't know, three hours. Alrighty. Only a couple of miles away from our anchorage, closing in nicely. It is 3.30, so we've made excellent time today, I think. 60 miles, we left at 7. You okay? And very happy to be here. The wind has dropped off completely. There's like barely a breath of wind. Uh, just motoring into the anchorage now. Happy days. I have no idea, love. It was working like less than an hour ago when I washed my hands. Well, there'd be residual pressure in it. I did a wash, I don't know what's happened, but there's literally, we've got no water pressure. The pump needs to cycle, right? I don't know what it is. All right, it's not going down anymore. You have to pull it. Looks like there's actually another boat in there. Nick also discovered that the water pump tripped out because there was an airlock um, with the washing machine. So at least that was an easy fix. Well, I, won't, I actually thought to myself today, we should be going a little bit faster. So I wonder if there is something fouling the hole. kind of had a policy yesterday where we're gonna put the camera down and have a nice comfortable cold beer. What time was it Therese? About eight. About eight. Bloody pitch black of course. And uh, the anchor alarms go off and we're dragging around. So the boat was just dragging. And at this point I am at a loss if you saw our episode before. You know on the boat drag before we'd been sat there again. That was a function of not having enough chain out. I can absolutely guarantee you that we had enough chain out. Maybe you're going to mention how the cushion went overboard, so it's another man overboard. Yeah, <laughs> we also, yeah, we also lost one of our cushions overboard and replacing it, according to Seawind's replacement policy, the, uh, you know, the price of replacing anything on this boat is greater than small African countries' national debt sometimes. Um, we're like, we're going to get that cushion, so we had to zip around a couple of five times before it sank. We are struggling to work out why this anchor will not set. Just can't get it to set, and I don't know why. It's a Sarka XL. It is spec. It is the right spec for this boat. We're on G70 chain. It's eight mil, which is a lighter grade of chain. I don't think that's it. Eventually, we did get the anchor to set, but there is just something about either our ground tackle or the way we are anchoring that is causing problems. We go head to wind. We wait till the boat is completely stationary before we drop anchor. If we are in five meters of water, we drop about 
10 meters of chain so the anchor sits on the bottom and then starts slowly reversing as the as the boat drifts back we pay out chain to about six times scope at that point we gently reverse until we feel the see the chain rise then we put the snubber on and hopefully get it to set i still cannot tell you why this anchor will not set but i am losing faith in our ground tackle one of the problems is that we have an issue as you've seen with the chain hook and we took all your advice on board it was put on the right way it was put on the right side up it still pulls the strap out if you reverse on it and that is a function of increasing the angle between the angle of the chain and the angle of the bridle so i don't have faith in the chain hook i don't have faith in the anchor this causes a few problems with us as we plan on going long-term cruising and remote cruising next season we need to be able to get off this boat and not come and find the boat like around in Singapore while we're in Ko Chang. We'll get it sorted, we will get it sorted. I actually think that really, uh, yeah, we will get this sorted. The thing is that once it's set, it's, I was about to, sorry, I'm just saying, once it is set, then it doesn't move. Like we've, as you can see, it's really gusty this morning. We've had about, probably about 30 knot gusts and we're solid. A few people on the cruisers form are saying it does not set well. There's a couple of Australians that are saying, look, it doesn't set well if there's weed on the bottom. It just, it won't dig in. So uh, my personal thoughts in is it just, it lays, it just lays sideways or upside down. It well, doesn't turn over and it, and actually, or it beds in a little bit and skips along the surface. I don't know what it is. I think what we need to do is um, attach the action camera to the anchor and see how it drops and sets on the bed. That's a very good idea, Therese, as always, the genius. If we find clear water, we'll do that because honestly, at this point, yeah, we are gonna have to hive mind the internet to work out what we're doing wrong because yeah, it's it's an ongoing stress. You know, we, we have got through just about all the issues um, that we had in kind of new boat stuff. There is no longer that kind of lump in the throat fear of like, oh shit, the screech is gonna get tangled. It is all about doing everything as I should always tell you on boats, slowly and methodically and not just going great guns, you know. I've got to get the deck spray out and kind of like clean the salt off everything, clean the beer off everything. Like last night, it was just chaos. There was beer cans flying around. There's like cushions full of salt. I'm going to go and make smoothie for breakfast and then we will get on with our day. Gonna try re-anchoring. Wish us luck because there's quite a lot of swell um, where we are and we're quite far out into the bay so I think that there's a bit of ground swell just winding its way around this point here. So we're gonna try and re-anchor. It's uh, eight o'clock in the morning so we've got all day. I'm gonna take it slowly. Fingers crossed we can do this in a relatively timely fashion but the most important thing is that we can actually get the anchor dog in. We also managed to anchor right next to a fishing pot but I think it's not tangled up in our anchor we seem to be past it now so that's a relief. Didn't see in the dark obviously. We're up! Okay, so we get 13 meters out. At this point I need you to go forward. Now listen I don't want to be reversing on the boat on this anchor chain unless the anchor is the anchor chain is in front of yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. For so sure. you need to, with your hand, point to what direction the anchor chain is in. So the anchor chain is coming out this way. And ideally, the boat will swing round so it's in front of us. How much should we have out? Okay. And what's the depth? Thirty-five meters and four meters of depth. Okay, you can go straight back. To me, it doesn't look like we're dug in. I haven't seen the chain come up, but also I haven't felt the boat like. Do you think we were moving? Yeah, okay. In that case, I don't think that we're dug in. Yep. Attempt two. 
zero, speed zero. In four and a half minutes of water I have six metres of chain out. No, 17 metres out. No, we just stopped and we're swinging back, so. Three metres out. I don't think reverse babe, because it will reverse in a different direction to where the wind is coming from. Now we're swinging back. So it's obviously being held, but whether it's fully dug in is another question. Impossible to tell the state of the bottom. Could be weedy or grassy. Do you want me to reverse? I'm gonna put five more chain out, five more meters out for luck. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. As per everyone, but you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, to be fair, we were doing it wrong. And it's very difficult actually to get this other thing on. So the, here, look. Yep. Onto this link. Facing forward. This that. That. So that is definitely how it's meant to be done, yeah? That's according to the internet. So yeah. So this is up, this is facing forward. Mm -hmm. The problem is that these are not big enough. They're not long enough to. Mm. Okay, so pay out a little bit more. I think the strap problem comes from the fact that if the loop is too big, it detaches the elastic strap. Right. Firstly, at this point, I want to see what the loop is at. So it's actually about having just enough enough tension. Well, that's, that looks about right. So basically, when we anchored up yesterday, we got to this point, right? <laughs> okay. When I reversed yesterday, the chain, the chain hook did not come out the first time. It was just there, mm -hmm. right? Now, one way that you can see if you're dragging, when the boat is dragging, She's going backwards, she's not fitting in. You can see the water moving around. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Same like this Yanka chain. Yes. Yeah. The first time that we dug in, because I don't like that fucking strap, I saw it lift, but I didn't break the water. Yeah. So I wanted to break the water. So did it now? It didn't. Do you want me to reverse a bit harder? I'm going to do it. I'll okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, that definitely came out of the water, Nick. Successfully re-anchored. I am expecting the wind to pick up overnight tonight, so it's gonna be gusting again about 20 knots here. So basically before we go to bed tonight, we have to be pretty confident that that anchor is well dug in. It's gonna be a real bummer if we have to get up in the middle of the night and re-anchor again. And a little bit later on, we are going to go ashore and there's a lovely little river, literally just opposite where we're anchored. We'll go ashore and um, do a little exploring. Let's go check out the river first. Oh yeah, I think he's saying he's saying to go around. One, one, one meter. One meter from the rock. Yes, sir, one meter. And uh, one five meter, two meter. Okay. Like this. Okay, like this? Yeah, okay, you. okay. Cop and car. I can see the channel, yeah. Yeah, it's like calm here and it's running here. Like when else would we ever go up a river in Thailand on a dinghy with our own boat anchored out the entrance? So this place has a ladder going up, so conceivably we could leave the dinghy there. So I think there's a little bar thing there with a ladder Hello. again. See what you see? You can see the sandbanks really easily. Yeah. Should have bought my side polarizer. Oh yeah, wow, that is really easy to see. Hey, there's our boat. All right, we're on a mission to find a supermarket because our provisioning in Pattaya was subpar. I think we can agree. Not quite sure what happened there. We just lost focus. Pretty nice, isn't it? Literally, come back with a bag of tropical fruit, some hot dog sausages. 
three tubs of ice cream and some snacks for afternoon tea. Stunning. This is what I think of when I think of sailing in Thailand. Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly this look. Yeah. Well, listen, it is 12.17. We'll get this stowed, then we're going to go for a slap up seafood lunch in that river. Lovely. <laughs> All right, then. Are you going to come back and get me or what? Yeah, we found somewhere to have lunch and uh, I think still see the boat that floats on as well. We actually can see our boat from here, that's crazy. Well, we've got prawns and we've got a sea bass and we have a papaya salad in there somewhere. Papaya salad? No, that's not right. That's deep fried prawns. A, this is sea bass and papaya salad. And papaya salad, medium spicy. It is very, very, very hot. An afternoon for relaxing on board. Tide's gone out, so this could be a little bit tricksy to get out. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're wearing polarizers. just stunning i will spin the camera around and show you and also we have a very lovely sunset shaping up behind me there and now we are going to go ashore again for a little drink and something for dinner hopefully we've had a good day love we've yeah, had a good yeah. day i had to do some maintenance on the boat yeah we kind of were looking at the top boat speeds yesterday and we're like Meh. It should be going a bit faster. Like got under the boat and the props and part the, the rubber gaiters that kind of like hold the uh, sail dryers. Like the amount of growth on there, it was insane. So under the boat with flippers and chisel, got all that done today. So we should hopefully get the same conditions, get another, I reckon probably half a knot. You deserved your beer today. Did you earn your beer? Did I ever? And we're off. <laughs> it was a ropey start. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. We had a, an ex patron and a follower of ours meet us at the beach. <laughs> I know you. I know you. <laughs> I mean, of all places, you know, I would have thought we'd be fairly anonymous here, but um, anyway, that was lovely. So if you're watching this, Scott, hello, lovely to meet you. I'll be with him in a minute. Yeah, absolutely. We go to islands, we went to Panyang, we went to Tao, we went to Samui, and we thought, meh, this is the best that Thailand has to offer, and now we're on Koh Chang, and we're like... Oh no, this is the best that Thailand has to offer. And it just keeps getting better. The anchor has dried. This anchor, I'll tell you what. That's where we were. And that's how we knew we were dragging. This is all the other bullshit that's taken place in this anchorage. It's like, been a journey. If you can't trust your anchor, then I cannot emphasize enough how that affects everything you do on a boat. Not having an anchor that you can rely on is, it just makes your life so stressful. We've never had issues like this before. The strap is literally in shreds. Oh, so, so we don't, we have the bridle on at the moment. Because they probably don't need to make one have okay. spare straps, but I don't trust the strap. Oh. Yeah? All right. Can you do me a favour? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to put my anchor alarm on to see if we're... Yeah. It's ripped to shit there. Yeah. And it's ripped to shit there. And that would have failed. It literally, it's not fit for purpose. This Mantis rubber piece of shit does not work. I'm sorry, Mantis, I love you to bits. How's the, how's the set look? Can it make it's, it's okay. When it, we don't appear to be dragging. If that's not dug in, then I have no idea how to tell whether an anchor's dug in. Hopefully, 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 the anchor and the boat will stay where we put them. <sighs> we'll see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we will see you next week with another episode of us sailing around this beautiful archipelago. Hopefully, slightly less drama, fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below as always. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you click the notification bell, then you'll be notified when next week's episode goes out. Okay, take care. Bye.